Right. Today we have a job for a customer that's uh, um, come up recently, asked me to look at this. It's a CD player. It's quite an old one. I'd say late 80s, maybe early 90s. So it's quite old. It's a JVC uh, XL E. 34BK. Um, it's basically, let's plug it in and show you what the fault is. It's not particularly interesting. The display lights up, but try and open and close the, uh, it basically, it don't do a lot. Um, play, it tries to play, but there's no sign of life. So, now this died during the middle. She's a um, musician, performer. This died in the middle of a performance that I was actually at, which is when I said that I work on electronics and uh, gave her my number. So, you know, if, if you want me to have a look, I'm happy to do it. Um, I didn't realise at the time it was quite as old as this, but we'll still give it a go because people. I know what people like, they, they, they're familiar with their equipment and if they can fix their old one and keep it going rather than have to buy a new one and become familiar with it again then that's fair enough. So we'll give it a go. Now I have to excuse the crudity of the video because I don't have a monitor attached to the camera. There are plenty of people out on YouTube who do this far better than I do. But we'll give it a go anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do the old Dave Jones give it a whiff. Yeah, that's. Uh, it does uh, certainly have a bit of a whiff. Let me just plug it back in. Let's see if there's any sign of movement. Because there's obviously no CD in there. Oh. Right, what I'm seeing is a spinning motor. It's stopping. Looks like it's slowing down, possibly. Yeah. So let's have a look. Looks like we've got a linear power supply fairly old school and a <sighs> looks like it's all hardwired which is a bit annoying and um, we will dig deeper let's get this front off leave couple of screws hopefully it's not a blown IC or just more specifically a custom IC because I will not be able to fix it if that's the case for this device are available anymore unless it's just a standard off-the-shelf component that's gone like a voltage regulator or something along those lines it's probably going to be a bit of a pain to get a look at new bits for it because it's purely because of its age and I think I need to wind out the door mechanism first before I do anything now how do we do that we got pinhole or something somewhere Ooh, it's not obvious. I might Can I find the drive motor for the eject mechanism. I'll 
suss it out and then get back to you. Okay, so what I found is it's not hardwired. I thought these were. Uh, I didn't really like. Uh, they they look like plugs, but I thought they were the type that were sort of crimped onto the board. But they're not. They do on plugs, so that's good. Um, I can't get this drawer open. The motor that drives it is somewhere underneath around here. I can just sort of feel it. In fact, oh, oh, that's the uh, motor for the laser. Just be a bit gentle with that. Cause I don't want to damage anything. It's proper old school this is. Okay so the laser assembly is driven by the motor there. What I'm going to do is undo the four screws. There are four screws. You can see screws. And I'm going to try and lift the, the mechanism out and take the front panel off at the same time because I can't get the front panel off while this tray is closed because I need to lift the tray out uh, the front bezel. So let's give that a go. Right so um, I'm going to remove the circuit board so I can have a look at the back of it um, and uh, see if we can suss out what's going on. I've disconnected the AC input from the transformer, obviously there's various taps here, uh, and then done the screws and removed the front panel. The front panel is hardwired to the main PCB so I can just move that out of the way. this over so that I can have a look at the bottom see what we've got I'm going to go over this with a magnifier and I suspect power supply issues that's 99% of the time that is what goes wrong with things like this um, I'm going to have a look and see if we can suss out what the problem is Okay, so I've decided that something's wrong in this area here, which is the servo circuit. Uh, the reason I've chosen that as the fault is because um, I briefly reconnected the mechanism uh, and I'd wound the laser back into its home position, the laser he reading head. Um, and when I powered it up, it instantly went bang right to the end and it just carried on going and going and going and going uh, I think the servo or motor drive circuitry here has got an issue so let's have a look okay so I've traced the traces back from this connector which is P803 and that's the one that run the spindle motor and the laser uh, reading head assembly motor is connected to and they trace back to this IC which is IC801 and that is a STA341M it's a NPNPMP triple diffused planar basically it's got six transistors in it 3MPN 3PNP in this sort of configuration so you'd have a positive negative positive voltage there a negative voltage there and then your motors are connected to this side and then this side um, will whether it's positive or negative chooses which direction the motor turns so your motor one end would be connected to ground then this would go either be ground which will be motor off positive which will be motor turning in one direction or negative to motor turning in the other direction um, so that's that's my first suspect so what I'm going to do is check the inputs to these because that uh, will give us an idea of whether the um, input to these uh, ICs is incorrect or not Okay, so I think I found the problem. Uh, exactly where it is yet, I don't know, but I know what the root cause is, I believe. And we are missing the voltage, so I've got my meter hooked up here. 
it's in continuity mode so we'll just check that we've got a good ground so here's ground yeah we have so let's put in volts connect up the AC let's switch it on now we have here uh, 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 where is it 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 is here this is plus 12 as you can see now this one should be minus 12 Nephil 2.7 yeah something's not right so I think we've got something wrong in the power supply which brings me back to square one so let's trace it out okay so I think I have found the actual cause of the problem now the moment's in the minus 12 and that is derived from a circuit here um, and this transistor here which is a PNP transistor it's a 2SA934 I think um, check that there's a dial here the transistor's fine um, the problem I'm finding is that I'm going to stick some light because it's a bit dark uh, this diode um, I haven't got the power on at the moment this diode should be regulating the voltage which we'll check in a second and then this uh, transistor is the pass transistor for it uh, Q104 it is and then we've got R110 here which is measuring about 5 meg which is way off and that's in circuit and if anything measuring a resistor in circuit should be way less than what it is because it's what colour is it it's uh, um, orange black black red so that's 3002 3 30 ohms? Oh, I can't remember. But bear with me. But it's not 5 mag anyway. But what we'll do is we'll power it up. Everything is connected correctly. That all looks good. Oops. Try not to trash the thing while I'm at it. So you should be able to see the meter. Yeah, you can. So what I'll do is I'll put my probe on the negative side of this dial, which should give us our minus 12. Mm. Duh. I wish I put my multimeter on volts and not ohms. So we'll try that again. So we should get... Minus 12. Minus 23. Ooh. Let's try the other side of the dial. Hmm. That's certainly not right. system is connected to the minus side of that diode to the negative and what are we getting? minus 23 and on the other side of it in a very confined space so I'm having troubles getting that probe onto it right that should be a good connection let's power it on
Oh, that doesn't look very promising at all actually. I wonder if that diode is knackered. Let's try uh, measuring the base on that transistor, which was... Let's do the measurements off camera. Right, I'm going to put this all down to an open resistor. We got Because we've got a plus and minus power supply, the circuit's almost duplicated with almost all the same components apart from um, some, are slow, uh, some are reversed and are... Uh, for example, in the positive side, it's an MPN transistor instead of a PNP transistor. But we'd have the two same resistors, one here and one here. They've both got the same market on them, they're both 10 ohms. This is the one on the plus 12, which is working. As you can see, oops. 10 ohms. And this is on the minus 12, which isn't working. 6.6 .6 meg. So... I've checked the transistor, it's good. I've checked the diode, it's good. I've checked everything else, everything's good. It's just that. So, I don't have, they're 5% tolerance resistance resistors. I don't have any on hand, so I'm gonna have to get some. Um, and once I do, I'll put it in, and hopefully this will be a runner again. Um, I don't think uh, it's worth chucking it away, even with it being 25 years old as it is. Um, the date codes are from 1990, so... Uh, all brought down due to one little resistor. I think they run pretty hot, because they're raised off the board, so they probably are under a bit of stress, which is probably, which is, uh, probably by a fail. And this does get heavily used. This is used by a uh, musician, singer, who for her backing music, so that explains that. Anyway, I'm just going to do a couple of voltage measurements, so I'll pause this for a sec. Okay, right, oh, lead. So I've got, I've got to switch the power on, so let's measure this resistor. So each voltage on each side of this resistor, so we have 18 volts on that side, 19 volts on that side, this one. 2.7 volts on that side minus 23 on that side so yeah definitely something not right there it shouldn't have a positive voltage on the negative voltage rail um, now it's not entirely impossible that there's something else wrong down the line um, I haven't been able to find any shorts um, so until I replace that resistor I might not find out unless there's in, if there is something else wrong but, because that resistor may have blown for a good reason, but we'll find out. Okay, so let's have a look. These are the resistors that I've removed. Um, so if anyone can tell me what's going on with these, these are, this is a tannin resistor, I'm 100% sure of that. But the colour code goes brown, black, black, which is 10 ohm. Yeah, the colour code goes brown, black, black, red, white. Um, so, and, and this doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm 100% certain that this is a 10 ohm resistor. But the red and the white bands don't match anything that I know as far as like the tolerance rating is. So, this is the one that I've removed from the good part of the circuit. As you can see, see 10.8 ohms, but and this is the bad one. Same markings, you know, in the mega ohms region there. So, um, so if anyone knows what that is all about, then do tell me, because <laughs> I've not come across it before. Anyway, I've just taken a trip to our local electronic supply place and picked up some new resistors. Now these are significantly smaller than the ones I removed. Not by too much, but uh, they are smaller and they're half watt. I don't know if that's gonna be enough because uh, I've got a feeling that they might need one watt resistors, but we'll soon find out. If the magic smoke comes out, then we know they're not big enough. So 
let's get these soldered back in and see how it goes. Okay, it's crunch time. New resistors are in. And this is genuinely the first power up. Let's display. Alright, let's get my meter and check the voltages. Right, hopefully you can see the meter, but I'll read out the readings anyway. So let's check our voltage rails, which are. Da -da 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 -da. That one's there. Oh, power on, that help. Hmm, that's not promising. Minus 12. Minus 2. It seems that our problem has moved to the other side. Hmm. That would be annoying. Let's check that resistor. Hmm. Let me see. That's annoying. Alright, so that was a red herring. I was probably the wrong point. <laughs> it does help if you probe the correct point, doesn't it? So let's put our mechanism back in and connect it up and see if it works so, this is a, quite a nice unit to work on because it's very easy to disassemble and reassemble which is probably just as well because it's been apart and together a few times um, yes. I mean, modern CD players, if it was a fault with it, I probably wouldn't even bother looking at it it'd just be like, yeah, get a new one but this one's a bit of a, I wouldn't say vintage, but it's a nice old unit, 25 years old. And if the only thing wrong with it in 25 years is one blown resistor, then I think it's done well. Can't really complain at that. So, I watched a, quite a few videos from... Um, another YouTube user called 12 volt vids it does a lot of repairs on older equipment like VHS players and laser disc players DVD, uh, DVD players TVs that sort of stuff audio equipment um, quite interesting actually and uh, him along with a few other people on YouTube have helped me pick help me uh, improve my skills so, Definitely worth watching what other people do, you can learn a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the camera while I put this together. Right, so it's back together, power on, open, oh it opens, didn't do that before. CD in, to my audio test desk. Looks promising, play, and it's playing. Right, let's get some speakers hooked up to this bad boy. And there we are, hooked up to my Moran amp, playing quite nicely. All this music is courtesy of, uh, uh, I've forgotten his name, Jason something. Um, it's, uh, I'll post the link in the description to the website, it's all royalty free music. So. But uh, there you go. Just got to put the lid on, but don't need to film that. Thanks for watching.